I got this gas meter from UGI Meters Limited and a load of stuff that came my way. It has a seal on it there from the uh, Weights and Measures office or something like that. Measures in cubic feet. It's sealed all the way around with a fold over metal seal. There's no other way into it apart from the gas coming in the top up here and leaving through this hole here. It has a little arrow on it. I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. So what I can see is that this metal band all around the outside is just folded over. So I wonder if I cut it once, I might be able to pull it off. I've mounted in the vise. So I want to try and prise off this metal band. So it appears to be coming up quite easily. That's it, the metal band's off. Looking at it now, we can see that there's a top piece and a bottom piece and a seal in between. So I'm going to have to force this open, I reckon. So I'll use the same screwdriver again. That's enough to get me in. So it appears, by the sound of it, to be sealed with some kind of glue. There we go. Looks like I've broken the seal. So let's work it all the way around. Inside, we have an empty tub for the bottom. We have two chambers. Bit rusty. Some black powder, brown powder there. Let's tip that into the base. So it feels like it's sealed with silicone all the way around or something similar. Silicone and it looks like it has another tray inside. So the gas comes out through this, this hole here. So it comes out through this hole. And that's open to this chamber. And on the other side it looks like there's another chamber to the top. So as I understand it, there's two diaphragms in here. That somehow pump the numbers around. So let's see if we can get this cover off. that weights and measures seal and there's some kind of a plastic clip on top of that which I suspect is riveted on Force this up with the screwdriver. Seems to be coming. So 
it's still pinned on over here. You can see what we're dealing with. It has metal spikes on that side, which I've levered up. There's a set of gears in there as well. you could do this without disconnecting the meter. So there's some of the cogs off. And this gauge dial is held on with a small small bolt. It's 5.5. Let's try 7. Too big. screws off there. There's your gauge. So this little unit here is what rotates There. Let's work that around again. Looks like we're almost out. Inside in the top, we have the little thing that drives the meter. We've got the outlet, we've got an inlet. It's all steel construction. Feels a bit wet in here on top. So we've got two bellows, I reckon. So I'm looking at this gas meter I've smashed open, the gas comes in this side and goes out this side. So it comes in through this hole here, into this top area, and then somehow passes through these bellows and comes out this hole here, which goes up through this white pipe to the outlet on the top. How does it work? The gas comes into this top chamber. One of these bellows will be slightly open. And as the gas pressure forces its way around, one bellows will open, the other will close. So the gas maneuvers its way down through the bellows. Where does it come out?
So the bellows are quite an interesting design. There's two pairs of bellows, one on each side, open, covered by these little valves. And you can see one side open there. If I rotate this, you can see the other side open. So this is the inlet, here or here, and the exhaust is underneath here and out this way. And it comes out underneath here, and I'll take it apart once I've explained it to show you how that works. When the gas is flowing through it, it causes the bellows to expand and causes this little crankshaft to go round and round, which perpetuates the motion. It's always in a position where it won't get stuck. So whenever you light a gas fire or you open up your cooker, it forces gas down through this hole into the top chamber, through to the bottom chamber, and up through this hole and out through that white pipe. This little T bar here rotates, and that feeds through to the back of the dial. So it's a very simple mechanism, really. Let's take one of these bellows apart. I'll unscrew this little screw here. I need to get into the top. There's a little eclipse up here. Hoping I can force them off with the pliers. So that's one side off. One eclip. A little washer. That lifts up. That lifts up. two little nuts and bolts here. Let's try the quarter inch size. That's it. It's a quarter inch. So I've removed these little covers that cover the valves, or maybe they are the valves, they cover the diaphragm chambers. This is the exhaust ports that go out underneath. And these are the inlet ports, or inlet and exhaust. So if I move in this arm, you can see underneath the centre diaphragm passing there. So right now the diaphragm is over here, so this one is full of air, or gas. If I push it over this way, it exhausts this chamber here and fills this chamber back and forth, back and forth. Now if we get a little piece of paper or something, I can show that in, in motion. So I've just taken two strips of paper to illustrate this. So as one side fills, the other empties and vice versa. So here's the cover that covers the top goes over one way, and while it's over that way, this chamber on the inside allows the gas from the other, from one side of the bellows to go out the exhaust, and this side here fills. And as it moves across, one side's partially filling and emptying, and the opposite's happening on this side over here, but offset by a small amount, so that the whole system is constantly in motion. By having the whole system constantly in motion, it can never get stuck, so it'll always restart. That's all done by the pressure of the gas flowing through the chambers. To give a meter reading.